The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. This is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Welcome back to my show. Today's guest is going to be Brett Eastburn. He's the man with no arms, no legs, and yet no limp boundaries. So here is Brett over here. <laughs> over here. Hello. And hello, this... Patty, and hello, Fort Wayne. Ah, welcome to my show. And this is lovely wife, Krissa. Hello. I said it right. Yes. Ah. Welcome to my show. Thank you for having us. I'm glad pleasure. you came. I'm glad you came because I've always admired you. I've been a fan of yours for several years now. I met you through a, a, a friend of mine, uh, Carol Lockridge. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got to know you. And then I have you on as a guest now. Thank you. So, um, I understand you have a program uh, with... Uh, Speaching, mm -hmm. speaking, <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking. I'm sorry, Heath. speaking and uh, to people about inspirational. Uh, do you have a comedy act as well on top of that? So tell me about yourself, about what do you do with your program? What kind? Okay, well, I have a motivational keynote program. It's uh, at roughly an hour long, and I have that designed to work with from elementary school up through college and then any other kind of group from police group, military, uh, church organizations. The, the, it's pretty much the same program, but it always kind of tailors itself to whatever group that I'm in front of. So um, what's the favorite group that you normally talk in front of? Well, that one's a kind of hard to answer, but middle school students are got a lot of energy, and I've... I still kind of have that energy at 40 years old. 40? Yes, 40 years old. As of, as of 28th of yes. December. 28th of December. So middle school has the most energy, but I like every, every group's different, and so I enjoy each one. And then comedy is a whole other animal itself. When did that begin? Well, I started comedy 20-some years ago, and then I... Uh, I kind of put that on the back burner as far as going to comedy clubs, mm -hmm. but I incorporate humor into my motivational speeches. I think that if you're not enjoying yourself, you're not paying attention. Or That's learning. Right. Or learning. Uh, so over those years, I've done the comedy in the speech, but then four years ago, I got back into stand-up comedy where I go to clubs and, and colleges and stuff like that. Well, how often do you go on the road? We are on the road roughly 150 plus. 150 plus days a year. That's a half a year. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's spread out throughout the whole entire year. So we have teacher's hours, which is really nice. So we have summers off, and during the summer times we'll do police camps, oh. youth camps. And then during, just like a teacher, we have at least three or four weeks off in December. So we, we're able to control our own schedule since we schedule ourselves which is nice. You say police camps. Mm -hmm. um, uh, youth, they have youth camps for kids that, that would like to be an officer when they, when they grow up. Oh. Or a pioneer camp where there's at-risk youth and that's their last chance before they are sent somewhere else for rehabilitation. They have a chance to go to a summer camp for one or two weeks to, to it's, it's mainly to help the police officers get more acclimated with the kids and then they understand that the cops are there to help not just to arrest so we do a lot of those so we you deal with troubled children as well yes do you counsel them uh we have but that's not it's not our profession we're, we're not licensed in that area oh okay. that's not what no boundaries does but we have been personally requested and we do that occasionally 
Uh, you, like you would speak to a whole class or an auditorium? Or? It's usually the whole, for schools, it's the whole school. Yeah. Uh, for corporations, I try to get as many people in the room as possible. Let's, if we're going to come and talk, let's go ahead and speak to everybody. So you have to go through the CEO first or the president? Or do they approach you or you approach them? Most of the time they contact us. Oh. Uh, and a lot of it well, about, is word I'd of say, mouth. Yeah, 60% is word of mouth. And then the other portions are our website, which is brighteastburn.com. And we send out a mailer, a brochure mailer, to a lot of schools throughout the area. Yeah. So that's mainly how people get a hold of us is word of mouth and then through our website and call us. And then I'll put out articles occasionally, and then that's where corporations will read that and then go to the website. You do have a website, which yes. is good. I've, I've been there. It's very good. Well well put together. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you also have an email address. Um, later on during the show, we'll be uh, putting up uh, his name, uh, address, and email, whatever contact he has, and Krissa. And um, thank, oh, I'm not missing anything, bretteastburn.com. Yeah, Brett uh, there's, Eastburn. There's the email. There's the that's email. That's my email, brett at bretteastburn.com. Yes, there's two T's in Brett. There is, there is. Um, when you do uh, people with who are disabled, who are, quote, handicapped, unquote, I don't know what the word is now. Uh, like groups groups with disabilities? Yeah. Is that, uh, yeah. Dis what do I do when I address that, how do, how those do types of groups? How do you approach them? Do I... Uh, it's the same speech. I don't change it for them. I don't think that they're they're still part of society, so I go in there and treat them just like I would any other group. Yeah. Well, do you have people come up to you individually and say, this is what happened to me. How can I overcome that? There's a lot of people who will come up after the presentation and really feel a strong bond to Brett because he shares so much of himself in that one hour yeah. that they they really just want, they feel that he will understand, and he does, because he's been there, done that. So we've had a lot of kids who are in chairs who are not allowed to drive, and we try to help them understand that they do have the ability to drive. They just have to go through the proper channels. So, yeah, we do have some people who come up and tell us personal stories and that, or fun stories. It's just, it's a connection that they have. People love to talk to Brett all the time. Oh, that's so, I love it. I love talking to you. You're just an easy person to talk to. <laughs> you're, Thank you're, you. You're so open. You're not, you're not holding anything back. You, you don't pull any punches or anything like that. Oh, I try not to. I'm, <laughs> well, except for when I'm in Taekwondo class. And All right. You're in Taekwondo? Well, I, I studied it for a while, and I got up to green belt, and I can break two or three karate boards and all that good stuff, but then you have to throw punches. It's kind of... <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of part of the deal. What, what happens when uh, this person has a handicap and turns it into an obstacle? Uh, how can they overcome that obstacle? Well, to overcome, once you've decided that your situation, that you're not handicapped, and you turn that into an obstacle, which is like an obstacle course. Spiritual? Uh, it can be... Both. Oh, it's it can all. be both. It can be when you're just trying to take on a project or yeah. dealing with yourself spiritually, that if you look at it like an obstacle course, of, of course it's going to be difficult, but you'll be able to get through it. And It's it, eliminating the word, I can't. Definitely. Every time you use the word, I can't, you're placing a handicap on yourself limitation, and other people yeah. around you. Limitation. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> You're limiting yourself, and that's the definition of a handicap, is something that will get in your way, slow you down, or stop you completely. And it's, it's something that can be removed. So when you take the I word, the word I can't out, then you've eliminated your handicap. Sky's the limit, but even that, it's a challenge, and you like Oh, yeah. Well, that. we didn't say it was going to be easy. There's always challenges. Well, I think the <laughs> other mistake that most of us in society make is that we don't break each project down into steps or pieces. I think we try to take on the whole project at once and feel overwhelmed. Yeah. And when you're approaching dealing with something, if you just take a little piece and deal with it and then move on to the next one. It's just like cleaning house. You can't tackle the whole house one in one day. Corner at yeah, time. you have to do little corners each day cuz if if not then you're just you're just overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm overwhelmed all the time. <laughs> me too. I trust me. <laughs> Um, do you deal with the mentally handicapped? 
Uh, we we have worked yeah. with uh, with groups, and well, I have. I've all my life. I've been in the healthcare industry, oh, yeah. not certified, but as a volunteer. Right. So we have a, a facility that helps people with mental disabilities in our town maintain jobs, get them and maintain jobs. We have a carriage house here. Okay, ours is called the Logan Center. And so I volunteered there for very many years and at uh, the hospital on the amputee ward. And my mother said, there's a reason why you're doing all this. Well, <laughs> <la -da. laughs> I met Brett. Oh, everything kind of fell into place He's there. Cute, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. He is very cute. Well, tell them about the group we, where we fly out to California. And oh, yeah. We're, we're Kiwanis members. Oh, yeah. And so we, once a year, we fly out, they fly us out to California and there's a ranch out there. Now I cannot remember. Wonderland Ranch, I, I think. And yeah. they, um, the, it's a, the key club. So it's people who have mental or physical disabilities and they are dedicated to making their community a better place. So they bring us out there to talk with them and hang out with them for the weekend. And that's one of our favorite places to go and hang out is with, with those group of people. They're just, Aww. they're real people. Yes, they There's are. no political correctness involved. It's all honesty. And that's what I like. Well, and the attendees, that's, they have mentioned several times that that's one of the highlights of their, I think they're there a week or over the weekend. Yeah. And one of the highlights is my program and they just can't. They can't wait. They go bonkers. That. I, mean, I love it. You're so bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it. Don't let them fool you. They call me Bubbles. I'm a part-time clown, by the way. Mm. Oh, excellent. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, anyways. I don't get called bubbly <laughs> very often, so okay. I, li I'm, uh, I like it. I like maybe fearless oh, right. here. <laughs> right. Here we go. I was going to say I was a nurse's aide for Ch Blairview Children's Hospital in Toronto, and I worked with people who had MS and M, you know, D, M, D, A, M, D, and super palsy and all that sort. So uh, I, I, I know how to be able to be around and not feel self-conscious. Do people feel self-conscious around you? Only for the first... Brief moment. I think five seconds. Yes, five to eight seconds. Right. Yeah. I, I find it that it's my job to be the icebreaker and... Um, I've polished that over the years, and I think that it, once you break the ice, right. then they don't feel that way. And That's so right. it, humor really helps. Yes, it does. You know, a smile on your face. Yes. Not That's being angry not all the time. That's one of the reasons I became a stand up comedian. <laughs> well, you did a <laughs> very good job. Yes, I heard you in action. You're pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> Do you want to hear one of my stand up okay. jokes? Well, several years ago when I was getting back into stand-up comedy and I was really focused on what other comedians do and I was studying other comedians and I noticed a lot of other comedians like to do impressions. Yeah. So the first impression I came up with, this is my impression of a tree that grew up too close to the power lines. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're so funny. <laughs> and, and, and you're Christian as well. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Can you talk about Christianity in any of your <clears throat> speeches or anything, seminars? or. I end every program with that I was born this way. There's no medical reason why, and which just backs up the, the way I believe even more. I believe that God made me this way yeah. so that I can do what I want to do, have fun doing it, right. and then come here and show you that you can do anything that you truly want to do. That's why I was born this way, and I am very proud of that. Sure, I mean... Who wouldn't be? I mean, you're a beautiful man. Oh, thank you. So yeah. Krista does my hair. <laughs> she she does a very good job. <laughs> well, thank well you. she was a cosmetologist when we met. Oh, so. I still am. I'm technically, well, but I'm not practicing. Just on my you friends practice and family. On my hair. Yes. It looks it looks very really, really smart. <laughs> Did you cut it too? Oh yeah, oh. absolutely. Very nice. Thank, thank you. you. Stereo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so in school, you took sports. Did you know? Uh, I did. I did go out for several sports. Um, golf was not one of them. Oh. If I'm sorry to reach across to you, but I wanted to show you in the book his one of my favorite pictures of him is in here. There it is. 
That's okay. him with the six pack. I don't know if you can, if you want to zoom in that on later. This one? Where? This one right here. Six, six pack? pack. <gasps> He's working out. Woo! Okay, this one right there, if you can. This one. Oh my goodness. Somebody's a little fuzzy. Oh, anyways, that okay, was pretty so good. <laughs> I originally went out for basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did play on, on the home team, point guard. And the thing with basketball, I, I wasn't going to be the guy to run up and make the slam dunk. But as point guard, I got very good at getting it past the timeline and passing it off to somebody else to where they could make the two points. Yeah. And then from there, I tried other sports. Yeah. I dabbled in football until my teammates tried to use me as the football. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's very you were disorienting. Smaller than it's like, Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the <laughs> spiral. I, I did baseball for, yeah. for a little Soccer. while. Uh, soccer, I was a goalie, and then <laughs> my my main sport, though, the one I enjoyed the most was wrestling, and I started middle school, went all the way through high school, and then I did a, a couple years in freestyle, oh. which is AAU, Amateur Athletic Union, mm -hmm. and I got sixth in the state of Indiana, oh. third in regionals, and fourth, fourth in the nation. Fourth in the nation? Did yes. you go to the Olympics? No. Uh, actually, well, I got fourth in the nation in Indianapolis. Right. And back then it was at the Hoosier Dome. Mm hmm And now it's Lucas Oil. Yeah, Luke, well, it's a different building completely mm -hmm. now. But uh, I got fourth in the nation and didn't know until afterwards that I was only two slots away from qualifying to go to the Olympics. The 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 scouts come down and they take the top two. Or whoever gets the top two positions in freestyle, they take them and start training them for the Olympics. So mm -hmm. I was only two slots away from possibly going to the Olympics. If you had known, I, to think, the Olympics. I think those the last two you guys would have been in a world of hurt. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think they were hurting anyway, but I yeah. might have poured it on a little bit more. <laughs> so you got awards, which is pretty good. I wish I had a picture of them. There's some in the book. There are? Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll look through them. Uh, speaking about book, he has a new book out called I'm Not Missing Anything. And I think they're going to show it on the screen here. It's called uh, I'm Not Missing Anything. It was by No Boundaries, Inc., written by Brett Eastburn himself. And uh, let's talk about that. What's it about? Well, basically... We'll open up the book so they can see both sides. Well, the front and back the front at the same back. time. The book I is small, and it has Brett on the front and on the back to show that it's a little package, but there's a lot of information inside. You know, dynamite. Maybe small. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure yeah. packs a lot. Just don't like that food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the, the book, there were several reasons why I wrote it. Um, one is it, it's a memoir of my life from the day I was born. Uh, you remember that far back, eh? Uh, <laughs> well, I remember, that one. <laughs> I remember stories. Stories. Like, trust me, I had a grand en entrance. I'm sure you did. Um, they didn't have an ultrasound of, of, of me before I popped out. I popped out two months premature. Oh. And so everybody's like, whoa. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> uh, yeah. I So I started off that way, and then it, it goes through till now. And it's also a self-help book. All the theories that I try to relate in my motivational speeches and in the comedy shows, the stuff that I, the, my life theories that I apply to myself to try to be more successful, yeah. I, I, we've got in the book as well. You got I, cool. I also like the book, if you've seen my program or you've seen my comedy show uh, and you've got a whole bunch of questions that I couldn't answer in that one hour that I had with you, we try to answer that in the book. You got quotes in here, I understand. Page chapters fifteen, eh? Mm-hmm. Ah, I think it's about two or three pages in. Oh my stars! So, well, you can see that the first part is the quote, and then after that, it it gives a synopsis through of how or the way that we, we apply it. that to like, our lives. Yeah. Say you're starting having doubts about your. Uh, uh, about yourself and about your job and everything like that. How do you get yourself out of that? Well, when I get down in a funk, I just go do a speech and that pumps me <laughs> out. But everybody can't no, do everybody that, everybody can't though. do that. Uh, th the thing is, is when you're getting down at work or especially work 
or school is the you again quit looking at the the whole project. I think you're the biggest problem that most people have is being overwhelmed in the moment by the, the whole moment. thing and you oh. just need to figure out what your very next step is and just worry about taking that one and I learned that lesson back in high school in wrestling when wrestling is th uh, three rounds at two minutes a piece and it's very intense right and it's very easy to hit a wall and when I would hit that wall I would just take one more step yeah cool. or one more hop depending on how you want to look at it but <laughs> It's, it's hitting that wall and just taking another step and just instead of just throwing your hands in there and go, I, I can't go anymore. When you were like, well, I can take one more step. Sure. Well, also, one thing that you try to remember is 200 years from now, when you're having this little bitty problem, is it really going to matter? What it's your twenty it, years and you'll be in heaven so well, yeah. be forever. So <laughs> well, it's it's the entire mm. snapshot of right. your life right. how, and how you lived it. You're not defined by. Um, the situations you're in, you're defined by how you handled those situations. Nice. So it's it's just does it matter? That's and that's one of the theories in the book is my a two hundred year timeline. Right. That when you're feeling overwhelmed at the moment or yeah. or depressed that uh, two hundred years from now, how much is this moment or this day or this hour gonna gonna Me, matter? Yeah. How, what, what's it gonna at the mean? moment it's serious. Oh yeah, well right. yeah. Yeah, you know, speaking about uh feeling depressed and that uh there you you're you're into the subject now of bullying in school. Mm -hmm. Uh let's talk about that. I was so uh, quite I was bullied when I was a kid because I was a shy little thing. I'm also bipolar, I found out later in life. So I was, I get depressions and stuff. And I was picked on a lot. And there wasn't, and when I asked people, can I get, I went into a class with all the bullies. I was assigned to that class in high school. And I wanted to get out, but no one would let me out because they said, oh, come on, bite the bullet, you'll be all right. I wasn't, and you know, it, it wasn't nice. I was hurt physically and spiritually. Well, I was bullied as well. Yeah. I, I don't think anybody got through school without being, without being bullied. bullied at some point. Yes, but it seems to be getting rampant now, isn't it? I don't personally think it's any more rampant than it was Many back in the 50s. It, yeah. it just, now that the media is focused on it more. Yeah. There's more which, of a spotlight on it, yeah. It, there is more of a spotlight on it, and I'm kind of glad that they're doing that so that we can take care of it properly instead of just bite the bullet. Yeah. Uh, I, it's more complicated than that. Back when I got bullied, my my theory was, and this was elementary school and up, my theory was that if somebody's got a problem with who I am or how I look. Tough. Or how you do things. Or how I do things. Right. That's their problem, not right. mine. We don't have time to worry about. And in my programs, the one thing that I try to get across is that you, if somebody's picking on you. Right. You have to understand that the person bullying you is also having a bad day. And what I mean by that is that they really believe that the only way that they can get people to pay attention to them is to do something negative. And they're actually calling out for help trying to get people to pay attention to them because they don't feel like that they're being treated properly. Now, not that that fixes your problem. Yeah, it doesn't no. justify no, it. No, it doesn't. No. It doesn't justify it I all, but I, I just, back, it helps you understand. It takes the sting yeah, out of it, it for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think it didn't hurt me as bad when I understood that they're having problems too. Something in, in their own family making them. So, maybe they're getting it, yeah, it their own matter. family or kid up the street yeah. or who knows their what. Their self esteem who, might be really low. Yeah, who knows what's triggering They're jealous of that person. Whether that too. That's true. There's a whole bunch of other reasons that you can't see. And it's when you make an issue out of it, when somebody tries to attack you in some way or bully you in some way. When you make an issue out of it to their face, they feed off of that. Yeah, I wish I did. Now, as oh, a, so did I. I as a student <laughs> or youth, I think that you need to, if you're being bullied and, you're, and you don't know how to handle it, just go to an adult and ask. And ask, how do I deal with this? What do we do? Uh, and it, I personally believe that if that one adult says, bite the bullet, just be tough, then go to another adult. Eventually you're going to find... Uh, one 
Uh, I know counselors at schools are more informed now, and they've they've got more programs to yeah. to help you properly deal with being put in those negative situations. Absolutely, because these kids come with guns and knives and with fists. Now, I mean, it's more noticeable. At least to me, it is because I see it in in the paper. Well, would you believe it? We have one minute left. Wow, that went quickly. Oh, we had fun. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you came on my show. Thank you. Whoa. <clears throat> Shake the whole paw here, you know. Thank Shake you. Shake my paw here. I got cats. We'll, we'll have Brett sign this book for you real quick. Oh. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. Does it work? Mm-hmm. The why? Yeah, you got it right. Oh, thank you, darling. And I hope you enjoy the book. We've had wonderful responses so far. Nobody's returned a book, and everyone says that it's making them cry, laugh, and they've learned so many things that they didn't know about us. So I'm very proud of the book right now. Thank you. And they can get it on our website. At BrettEastburn.com. That's right. That's right. Oh, one thing we didn't mention is that I will be back in the area at Snickers Comedy Club. I think it's dot biz as you can go to their website. Mm -hmm. And that is May 8th, 9th, and 10th. That's right. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming into my uh, uh, studio here. And uh, I do like to thank the East Burns here. And thank you for coming on to my show, and uh, God bless. I hope to have you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day.